reason for you to be behind, please come in front. Unless you have a baby and all that, it's a good story. Can we just read that verse? For, okay, now for those who have for those who have your Bibles, turn to that verse. That's a very important verse. Like if you can, highlight it or underline it in your scriptures. Ephesians 1, 3. Ephesians is in the New Testament. I'm saying all this because there are some new Christians here. The, the New Testament is the second part of your scriptures of the Word of God. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. I want everybody to read this verse together out loud because it's such a powerful verse as an introduction to this sermon that I'm preaching to you today. Okay, one, are you ready? One, two, three, come on. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly place in Christ. Everyone say every. 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 For those who are a bit slow in the Bible, doesn't matter what I advise you to do is bring a paper and a pen so you can write down Ephesians 1, 3, then you go back and check. So it's fine. Okay, so you might you might miss the, the rest of the sermons if you try to continue searching for it and it takes time. Okay, and it's like that, it's normal. For often when I first started reading the Bible, it takes me a long time to find. In fact, there are still certain books in the Bible which I don't read regularly. I find it difficult. Where, where is this book in the Bible? But if the if the if it's part of the Bible, it's in the Bible. Who can say amen? amen? Yeah? There's a book called Numbers, there's a book called Micah, there's a book called Malaika, there's a book called Ezekiel. So all these books is in the Bible. Okay, but we seldom read, but it is there. Okay, listen. The moment we believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we receive the rights to invite the Holy Ghost to come and live inside of us. Say amen. amen. So all of you here, if you have you have Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior. I hope you understand that you have the right to receive the Holy Spirit. This is basic knowledge. This is basic, basic knowledge, but often being ignored by Christians. So you accept Jesus, you have the rights. Don't just think that other people have the rights. And for those of you who have accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and you have not accepted the Holy Spirit, it's time for you to really do it. And for those of us who have received the Holy Spirit, it's good. To daily ask the Father. Whom do we ask the Holy Spirit? Jesus said, ask the Father. Everyone say, ask the Father. Ask, ask the, the Father. Father. Jesus said, if you ask the Father, and if you are in Christ, He will give you. So don't ask this person or that person, but ask the Father. The Bible says, ask the Father, and He will give the Holy Spirit. So if you believe in Jesus, you have the right to ask the Father for the Holy Spirit. Not just one time in your life, but daily. Say daily. 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 Daily, just like daily you need food. You don't just eat one time in your life. You don't just bathe one time. You know, you don't just sleep one time and for the rest of life don't sleep anymore. It's a daily, there's a lot of daily things in this. God fashioned us. God created us in such a way. But it's true for the physical, it's true for the spiritual. A lot of daily things. And it's important to ask the Father daily. Come on, ask your friend a question. Are you daily asking the Father for the Holy Spirit? Come on. Are you daily asking the Father for the Holy Spirit? If you have not been doing it, it's not too late. You can start today. You can start today. Don't beat yourself up. Ah, I'm very bad. No, that's not the whole idea of saying this. It's to remind you. If you're not doing it, then today you can start. You can ask the Holy Spirit to fill you in the morning, in the night. Just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you once again. Because if the Holy Spirit comes wisdom, everybody say wisdom. Wisdom. You should need. The Holy Spirit comes strength. Say strength. Strength. As parents, we need strength. As pastors, we need strength. As doctors, as servants of God, we need strength to do the right things in this life journey. So we need wisdom, we need strength with many other things. The Holy Spirit comes all of this. So that is vital to ask the Holy Spirit to fill us regularly. Okay? When the Holy Spirit, who is the Spirit of Jesus, comes to live inside of us, He who is the Prince of Peace comes to live with us. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not a different God. It's the same God. There is only one God. Okay, in, in Bahasa, it's called Tritungal. Tritungal means Trinity. There's one God, three persons. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. Who can say amen? amen. And who is known as the Prince of Peace? <coughs> who is the Prince of Peace? Who is the Prince of Peace? Jesus. Jesus. Everybody shout Jesus. Jesus. There's no other prophet or anyone ever in any book called themselves or titled themselves as the Prince.
Prince of Peace, but Jesus the Lord. So you have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. You have the Prince of Peace living inside of you. In other words, you have peace. You have peace. Real Christians have peace. Even your money that's not enough in your pocket, you still have peace. When there's some challenges in at home, in a marriage, or in your relationship with your children, you can still have peace. Who can say amen? amen. Peace is not happiness. Okay, peace is something else that's divine. Like I've seen a picture, I've seen of a, an art picture where there's a, a mother bird with her babies in a, in a nest. A mother bird sitting in a nest with the babies and it's in a cave. And there's a big storm around that cave, big storm. I've seen this, this, this picture, Some, an artist drew this beautiful, beautiful. But still there was peace in the children because the mother is there to take care of them. So in Christ there is peace in the midst of storm. You can say amen. amen. The moment you feel you have no peace when you have challenges, it means your peace is not the kind of peace that God is talking about. God is talking about this divine peace that even when you do, you, you make a mistake in life, we will make a mistake. We will make mistakes in life. We are humans. But the peace has, does not leave you. The Prince of Peace. Because God says, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. You will fight with your spouse and you, have, you say, I have no peace. Something is wrong. Because God says, I never leave you, nor forsake you. You might feel sad. That does not mean your peace leaves you. Are you listening? You might feel, I'm annoyed with myself. I'm not with somebody else. But that does not mean your peace left you. Your peace, the Prince of Peace, the Holy Spirit, He will never leave you, nor forsake you. And who can say amen? amen. Even when you don't feel he, that He is there, He is there. Who can say amen? amen. That you don't, how do you we be brief? Breathing air has become such a cliche. We take air for granted. We take oxygen for granted. But oxygen is there. Sometimes we forget that oxygen is there. And oxygen is like one of the, it's a priceless things. One of the priceless things ever. Without oxygen, we all will drop dead right now. If God were to zap, zoom, remove oxygen from this room, all of us will drop dead right now. Amen. But God removes all our clothes, we'll still be alive. But we are more concerned about clothing. God removes all your friendship, you'll still be alive. Are you listening? God can remove all your loved ones from you and you are still, you can still be standing alive. But God removes air. It's one of the least significant things. And we all drop dead immediately. So there are things that need that's very significant, but has become very insignificant to us as the peace of God. Amen. Amen. The peace of God is real and we need it. We need to claim, we need to meditate. What is, say meditate. Meditate, meditate is more than believing. We have heard this before, I'm sure, but some have not. Believing is, I believe, I tell you, I tell Punita, Jesus can heal you. And Jesus says, Punita, Punita says, I believe. That's one time, that's belief. But when you get out of this room and you go to your workplace and everybody says, Punita, that pastor is crazy. Jesus cannot heal you. No, no way. Medicine can heal you. Doctor can heal you. But you continue to believe no matter what people say, no matter what you feel. You had a dream. The devil gives you a dream and tell you you can never, you're going to die. You can never be healed. But he says, no, I still believe my Jesus can heal me. So when you continue to believe, that's more than, that's more than belief. That's meditate. And God is calling us to meditate. Tell your friend beside you, you and I, we must meditate God's truth. Come on. You and I, we must meditate God's truth. Not enough to believe, guys. Not enough to believe. It's easy to believe in church like this. The pastor is preaching. Pastor is inspiring you. And your friend is like saying, you must believe. No, but if you get out, you are alone. Maybe in your working place, you are the only Christian. Everybody's Muslim. Or people just, uh, you know, they don't believe in God. They are atheists. Or agnostic. You know, don't they, but so you still believe. That's meditate. When it's difficult to believe, when temptation is so strong, when your pain is so real, so pain, so pain, but you still believe, that's meditation. Amen? Amen. And God is calling us to meditate all the days of our lives. Hallelujah. And the Prince of Peace lives in us. Every blessing that we need is already inside of us. The Holy Spirit does not live on top of you. The Holy Spirit does not live beside you. 
The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Say inside of me. Inside. And if the Holy Spirit lives inside of me, means every blessing in the spiritual realm. I said, right? I mentioned, I already explained what is spiritual realm. It means everything that I need is already inside of me because God is inside of me. But I'm not, I'm not experiencing certain things. If you are sexually broken and you are still not experiencing that, that freedom, why? But it's actually in the spirit, it's already inside of you. You've got to press on in your journey. You've got to press on. You've got to keep on asking the whole Father to give you the Holy Spirit. You've got to learn and relearn. And one by one, you'll be manifested outside. Amen. Say, every blessing is inside of me. Come on. Every, every blessing is inside, inside of me. Not because you are good, not because you are great, but because God is good and He's inside of you. It's all about God. It's not about us. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8, please. 2 Corinthians in the New Testament again, chapter 7 and verse 8 says, And God is able. Declare, is able. God is able. I ask this now, how many of you have challenges, you have problems in this area, that area? But the word of God is, God is able to do something about it. He is able. And our job is to believe, to meditate. And God is able to make all grace. Say grace. grace. For those who do not know, you need to know. For those who know already, let me remind you. Grace means something good you receive from God that you don't deserve. That's grace. God gives you something good and Jesus died on the cross for you. You don't deserve it. I don't deserve it. Jesus gives us a, a, a child. We don't deserve it. Just give us a marriage, we don't deserve it. Just give us a car, we don't deserve it. Grace is something that God gives us that we don't do. And we know we don't deserve it actually. Our hands, God gives us our hands and our feet. That's grace. Who can say amen? I mentioned the air is now. That's grace. None of us paid a single cent for the oxygen around us. It comes from God. That's grace. Okay? And God, I read it again, verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you toward you, not away from you but towards you that you always having all sufficiency in all things, say all things okay. all things, so all things including the things that you are not experiencing yet, that good job that you are waiting for that included in all things that healing in your leg you have the leg pain, all things is included, it's inclusive of that that spouse that you are waiting for, I'm waiting for my to get married, is all this includes that. That sexual recovery for you, if you are a sexual struggler, is that's exclusive, is in, is included in all things. Say again, all things. All things. Come on, say that you believe it. Come on. All things. All things. Yes. May have an abundance for every good work. And everything that God gives us, the last in my version. The last two words will be, the last four words, sorry, for every good work. Say for every good work. Everything. So everything that, every good thing that God gives, God gives us is that marriage, that healing, that child, everything that, that car, everything that God gives us is for good works. Amen. Amen. Don't forget that. Why God bless you is not for you to, yes, for you to enjoy, for me to enjoy, but it's for good works. If God gives you a good job to make good money, not just to have a good life. Yes, He wants you to have a good life. But at the end of the day, is to produce good works. God gives you a good voice to sing. Yes, you can enjoy and bless people, but it's for good works. Make sure all the blessings that we have from God produces good works. Say Amen. amen. Hallelujah. And some of you are already producing good works. You know who you are. God knows who you are. You don't have to prove to anyone. God knows who, who among us are producing good works and who among us are not. We don't have to prove to anyone. We just have to prove to a heavenly father who knows all things and nothing that we can hide from him. The Bible says you can put the thing under the table and hide under your bed so God knows what's under your bed. God knows what's in our thoughts. You can say amen. No wonder I worship him and I worship no one else and nothing else. No one and nothing deserves my worship but God and God alone because he's omniscient. He knows all things. There's someone else who knows all things I'll worship him or her, but I've never come across that. I don't think there's any. Hallelujah. God's word declares that God's children are blessed abundantly 
and with every blessing that we need. Some of you may say, abundantly? I don't have enough to eat. What do you mean abundantly? As I said, I reminded you again, I said earlier, abundantly in the spiritual realm. Are you following? For some of you, you don't deserve to be rich at the moment. You become rich, you'll forget God. Some of you don't, you don't deserve to get married at the moment. God knows you God loves you enough to protect you. You get your husband, you forget God. Some people are like that. Some people don't, don't deserve to have a child there. There's a child, they forget God. Are you listening? But everything that you need is already present in the spiritual realm. But it's not manifested in the physical realm yet for a good reason. Say good reason. God is not punishing you. He's a loving father. He can give you his only son to die like crazy on the cross. What else will he build before from you? All of your needs, you will get it in his right time. Your job is to daily walk with Him. Amen. Amen. So every blessing that you receive, because God knows you, you can't handle it. But don't make mistakes. I'm a pastor now. God knows I can handle being a pastor. That's why God made me a pastor. If God knows I can't handle, then I will not become a pastor. Are you listening? But then again, I shouldn't take advantage of being a pastor. I should be the pastor that God, the kind of pastor that God wants me to be. And for those of us who are married, God knows that we can handle marriage. God gave us marriage. But I said, oh, yes, thank you, God. But we need to know how to handle this gift of marriage. Whatever God has given us. Because God's timing is perfect. And we hear this over and over again. It's never too late. It's never too early. It's always on time. Sometimes it takes five years. Sometimes it takes 50 years. Yeah? The amazing Sarah gave birth at 99 years of age. It sounds crazy. But that's in the Bible. Her husband was 100 and she was 99. Abraham was 100 years old and Sarah was 99. But long before they were that old, God would give them food. You would, have, you would have a child. And not just a child, the child of child who's going to produce the Messiah and the, the line of Jesus. You can say amen. amen. I said, oh, if God says that we would have a child, we better make it happen. But they still they did. They had sex and when they still don't get pregnant. What they said to the wife said, okay, okay, you take my, my maid and have sex with my maid. And the child will become that promised child of God. So when God gives you a promise, it's up to God to make the promise come to pass. You don't make the promise come to pass. So instead of getting Isaac, you get Ishmael. Are you listening? Ishmael is the child of Hagar. God wants him to have Isaac, but he can't wait. They think that their timing is better than God's timing. So they want to do it their own way. Just God gives you a blessing. This does not mean you have to bring forth to make the blessing come to pass. About 25 years ago, God, God spoke and God used three different uh, men of God from different parts of the world to speak into my life. It was when I was in my 20s. I'm in my 40s now. But what say 50s? I'm in my 40s now. And, and then uh, at that time, when I was in my 20s, three different pastors from different parts of the world. I was in the Salvation Army Church at the time. And I was like clueless about prophecy and all that. And three different people who know nothing about me and prophesied over my life. You will be traveling around the world doing God's work. You, three different times, three different men said the same exact thing. I was like, what is this? I didn't make it happen. I just lived my life walking with the Lord, growing. And oh wow, it has come to pass. It is coming to pass. I've traveled and I'm traveling and I'm traveling more. So when God make a prophecy, just cause a prophecy to take place in your life, you don't have to make it happen. You gotta trust God. Say trust God. Trust God. And trust God daily. Trust God. Yes. No, whenever you feel low, whenever you are sick, you trust God. You're healthy, you don't trust God. You have a good job, you don't trust God. You have no job, you trust God. That's not the way. I always say, when you're on the mountain, mountain means your life is good, you trust God. When you go to the valley, valley your life is not so good, you still trust God. When you go to the mountain, you still trust God. Valley, but a lot of people have this habit. On the mountain, they forget God. Valley, they trust God. That's not the way God is not happy with such people. We have to be consistent in our trust towards God. All the days of our lives. Amen. Amen. If God can't trust you with $10, you think He'll give you $100? No way. If God can trust you with $100, He might give you $1,000. If God can't trust you with $1,000, you think God's going to give you $10,000? No way. Are you listening? God can't trust you with a Kalisa. You get a Kalisa, you will become a hero. You don't fetch anybody. Or you, you think your, your Kalisa become your God. You think God's ever, ever going to give you a Porsche? Never. Are you following? So whatever little blessings we have right now, thank God for it. Ask the Holy Spirit, how am I supposed to?
supposed to praise the Father, not just in words, in action. How am I supposed to praise the Father in words and action through this blessing that He has given me? Hallelujah. I tell you, more will come into your life. Tell your friend, more will come into your life. Come on, more will come into your life. And that's the truth. That's the truth. We don't just want to claim God's promises without knowing all this truth. We need you, you, there's a package in God's blessing. I want God's blessing, but I don't have to do anything else. No, no, no. Yes, 90% of the work is done by God, but there's still the tithing. 10%. And yet, I'm not about money. When it comes to collaborating with God, say collaborating. Okay. When it comes to working with God, you pray, you press it up, pray for something. Press it up, pray to become for a doctorate, let's say. Now she's doing a master's, she's going to be graduating a master's soon. Let's say you pray for a doctorate, and God says, and God says I'm going to give you a doctorate. You know? But then when you to, to get a doctorate, yes, God does 90% of the work. But you got to do the 10% of the work. Amen? And that 10% of the work is like trusting God, resting in God, studying what He tells you to study, staying away from the right people so that He tells you to stay away from the wrong people that He tells you to stay away from. So that's, that, that's just, and then all that you do to make your prayer get answered is only 10%. But the 90% of the work is done by God. You can say amen. amen. I may think, well, I have my master's this year, I work so hard. Whatever I've done is just 10%. God has done 90% of the work for me to achieve the master's that I received. For those who are newly parents, all the things that you did, the exciting things at night with your spouse, was only 10% actually. God did the 90% work. Amen. amen. God took care of the baby in the womb. God caused the baby to grow and the delivery to come, the right doctors. 90% of the work is done by God, but we forget. I mean, forget, I think, oh, my master, ah, the fact is, that my 10% I did, because I'm human, I complain a lot about the 10%. I really complain, for those who I shared with you, know, I really dropped, and I really gave up halfway doing my master's. And I think that's so hero, but actually, I did the 10%. And many of us are like that. We achieve a lot of things in life, but we only did 10%. We only tied. And God could have done the 100%, who can say amen? I want God gives us the privilege of contributing to make you feel good. Hallelujah. God is good. God's word declares that God's children are blessed abundantly and with every blessing, as I said earlier, that we need every blessing that we need. But why are Christians still experiencing problems? Why are many of us still experiencing problems? In our spirituality, in our sexuality, in our health, in our marriage, in our finance, in our family, in our relationships, and so on and so forth. Why? Let's find that out. Why? Why are Christians supposedly, the Bible says, we have the Holy Spirit, we have everything, every blessing that is already there, but why are we having challenges? So that's where, that's what this sermon is all about. Let's turn to John chapter 14, verse 27. Please. A, first part of that verse, and we go to the next part after that. John chapter 14 verse 27 8 Peace I live with you okay, This is the Prince of Peace saying and He has the right If I tell you If I tell Dino Peace I live with you my, so that, That's just words my, That words can mean nothing Unless I say Dino I live with you Peace in the name of Jesus that, that counts, that matters Because in Jesus kind of peace And this is Jesus himself says Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Everyone say shalom. 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 The original word is shalom. My shalom I give to you. Shalom means peace. Shalom means God's kind of peace. Peace that doesn't come from money. Some people say, oh, I have peace now, man. I have peace. Why do I have peace? Why well, increment? That's not shalom. That's an earthly kind of satisfaction. That's different. I have peace now. I finally got married. I finally got married. I will never grow old alone. You have peace because of that. You got to That's not shalom. That's an earthly kind of peace. That's fine. But that's not shalom. Yeah? You know, so God is talking about a different kind of higher level of peace. Which comes from heaven. It comes from God. And this is Jesus' word himself. Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. This he's emphasizing. He doesn't just say peace I live with you. When Jesus says double, it means something. Double means something. He doesn't say peace I give you. He continues. Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Then he, he, he's emphasizing something. Not. Everyone say not. 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 Not as the world gives to I give to you. Different type of peace. 
that you get from, from the world. From your husband. Your husband come home early or have peace. Huh? My husband came home early today. I have peace. That's different kind of peace. That's peace. But not this kind of peace. Jesus' kind of peace supersedes higher, higher than any other peace. Hallelujah. Oh, I put glee on my gate now. I got peace now. That's how I felt. Because I, I, had, I did a new window of my house. Such a big window. I mean, not that new. Uh, this was near my new bathroom. And there was no grill. For those of you who have been to my house, you know, right? There's behind, behind my new bathroom, there's a big window where you can actually jump in. So we didn't think about grill when you fix the window. And suddenly one day, I'm mean, having dreams. Dreams about people breaking into the house and blah, blah, blah. So I said, I, I have no peace with this window. So I called the man I said, how come with this window and we have no grill? There should be a grill. People can just jump in. Then he said, oh, we just, uh, whenever you want, we just close the windows. Huh? Because you know, we can just break in, so I said, no, I need to make, find, keep someone who can fix grills, like my is fixed with grill now. And after I told my wife, I said, I have peace now. There's grill. So even if you break the window, the grill cannot be broken. It's like really hard. But that's that kind of peace is earthly kind of peace. It's not shalom. It's different. But God is promising us shalom. Amen. My battery is running low. I hope in Jesus' name I will not go out before I finish my sermon. I normally judge my laptop, what had not happened today. Okay, anyway, let's move on. The night before Jesus died, he gave his peace to his disciples by saying, Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. This peace was not just for his disciples, listen guys, but for all of God's children. We all can have that peace. Say amen. amen. You can have that peace. Say, I want that peace in Jesus' name. Come on. I, I want that peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. So remember what happens in your life. What happens in your marriage, of course we want to have good marriage and all, good children and all that, but no matter what happens, you can still have that peace. And with that peace, you can do greater things. When you have that, you have a lot of challenges the world is giving you. Plus you have no God, you don't have God's peace. I tell you, you're going to be a wreck. You will be a wreck. But when you have a lot of challenges here, but you have that peace, you become steady. You can handle those challenges. But in, with a lot of challenges, we all will be thrown with challenges in life. We all will be thrown in, with challenges in life in one way or another, today or later. But just imagine without peace and you have all those around you. God is a nightmare. But when you have those challenges coming your way, and I used to like the word, I like the word, use the word challenge. These are challenges, I don't like, I don't like to use the word problems. When the challenges are around, but you still have that peace, you are like the bird in the nest in the midst of storm. So you need that peace. You want that peace, you must meditate on those peace and that peace. Okay? The peace was not just for Israel, for all of us, yet even though Jesus declared and promised that he has given us divine peace, many of us have to choose the opposite. What is the opposite of peace? Worry. Troubled mind. Anxious. Anxiousness. Thank you. That's your, so instead of choosing peace that is available, we choose to fill our minds with the opposite of peace. Let's turn, to, let's turn to the next part of that verse, verse 27 B. Are you there? Yeah. Verse 27 B. Let not your heart be troubled. So Jesus talked about, Jesus talked about the peace. I come to give you that peace in the world that did not give you. He doesn't stop there. He just he continued. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. In other words, if you want to have God's peace, you cannot say, I want God's peace, but I want to let my heart. See, that your mind and your heart always like, they are, they are like, they are siblings, you know. Your mind and your heart always like, they are not the same thing, but they work together. They are like twins, the mind and the heart. The mind and the heart, they work together. So God says, I'm going to give you peace of mind. Shalom is there. But then, if you want that, you must make a decision. Say, make a decision. Make a decision. Come on, say, make a decision. Make a decision. Do not let your heart be troubled, and let not your heart be afraid. And whenever the devil says, oh, be afraid. Think of your troubles. Be afraid. Hey, be afraid. Be afraid. He said, no. You got to say, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I will not let it happen in Jesus' name. I have shalom. So you can't have both. You can't have the shalom and trouble heart. You got to fight it. That's why I always say your head is higher than your heart. Your heart is lower. Which is more? Which is, which is greater? Your head or your heart? Your head. Say my head. Your head. You, you got to use the brains. Don't just follow your heart. I feel like leaving my wife and find another woman. Don't follow your heart. Use your head. I feel like I'm not, I'm, I want to quit eating fruits. No, no. Follow your head. Don't just, don't just follow your heart. I don't feel like eating vegetables. No, no. Follow your head. The, the, it's a fact. 
proven scientifically that vegetables are good for you. Amen. You gotta follow your head. Your head is higher than your heart. Don't you follow? I see like going to the toilet and cruising and finding for sex partners. That's your heart. Follow your head. If you go there, you're in big trouble. Trouble that you might regret it. You have a head. You don't have two hearts. You have a head and a heart. Two or we many of us have been following our hearts for so long until our head becomes retarded. <laughs> this part is retarded, this part is working. We can only have the feel only. I can feel. But I cannot think anymore. It's true. Many of us. <coughs> you gotta follow our head. Practice makes perfect. Think. My heart says go there. Pause. Think before you do it. Follow it. What I think this man. This man so handsome, so nice, so kind. Think. Should I? Should I not? Maybe I need to pray first before I trust him or become his friend. Think. Don't follow your heart. Hollywood says follow your heart. Follow your heart. That's what Hollywood says. Many songs talk about following your heart, but not godly word. Godly word says follow your head. Think. Who can say it? Think. Our mind is God's gift to us. Just as our heart, but our heart is so polluted. But God is God's word is there to fill our heads with garbage in, garbage come out. If you fill your heads with garbage, then your garbage lifestyle will be produced by you. Yeah? Godly, godliness comes in, godliness come out. So choose garbage or godliness. Garbage in, garbage come out. Godliness in, godliness lifestyle comes out. Hallelujah. So now the Bible says you want shalom, you must have, you must make the decision to not let your heart be filled with trouble. So whenever your heart is ba -ba 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 -ba, I feel trouble. This is a natural thing and that's real. When you feel trouble, you feel scared. Like, oh, you know, this, the office came to my working place to catch all my workers. Whatever it is, trouble your heart. You're going to say, oh God, you are higher than my heart. You are higher than my fear. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Lord, fill my mind with shalom. And the shalom will just transcend into your heart. You will just be able to rest and you will be able to pray and say, God, may your will be done. Your will is always good. You know what's best. You can say amen. That's what, that's what, that is what about heaven, that is, that is all about heaven, that is, how am I going to say, that is what, that is, that is about having God, when you have God, that's, that's life, that's kind of life, not if you have God, but still life is in a mess, and, and, and not going, there's no direction, let's turn to John chapter 7, please, and verse 38, thank you Lord, John chapter 7 and verse 38, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. John chapter 7 verse 38 says, He who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Okay? Out of his heart will flow. When you believe, where does believing take place? In your head. You hear God's word, then you think about it. The first time you accept that Jesus is in your head, then it goes into your heart. Amen? It goes into your, your, your brain is a big organ that God has put in our heads. We listen to God's word, we digest, we think about it, then we say, I believe. Boop, falls there. Or we think, think I don't believe. Boop, go out. Yeah, everything begins with your head. Your ears and you start. And when I, when the first time I told Alex about Jesus, that was, I don't know when I was that, and then maybe probably the first time or second time he didn't believe, but then eventually he believed. The head will digest. And now the, the belief has fallen into his heart, right, Alex? It's already but starts here, then it goes here. Okay, let's look at this. He who believes in me, as Peter has said, out of his heart will flow living, live rivers of living water. And this rivers of living water is called blessings. Say blessings. Blessings. Say blessings. 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 All of you have, I'm sure all of you have hosts. This water hose in your house. For those of us who have a uh, living partner, maybe you don't have it, you have not. You have a short ones. But for us, the living on ground floor, we have long ones to water our plants and clean our dog's poo and all that. You know, so we have long holes. You know, God's blessing. When we have God in our lives, our lives are filled with blessings from within. Who can say amen? Amen. Okay? But what happens to you? Jerry, you said you have. Okay, you say you have a hose. So what happens is you're on a pipe and there is water flowing, yeah, in a hose, but you, you because you are a strong man, you can right. see that, you hold the end of the hose, you hold it tight, tight. You know, the, 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 can water come out? Yes. As much as it, come, it will come out if you don't hold it. Different, right? So when you, your heart is gripped with fear and anxiety and worry, 
which God inspires not to, is exactly the same like you are actually you on the pipe. On the pipe, switching, switching on the pipe is the same as wanting blessings to come out. Say, I want blessings. I want Only blessings. a fool is on blessings. Blessings means healing, change, the husband that you need, all those blessings. That's blessings. But a person who has fear in the heart is the same as switching on the pipe, but at the same time they're holding, don't let the water flow off. The blessings are there, but it's not coming out. And it's not coming out, but it's coming out just a little bit. Unlike when you on the pipe and you just let the blessings flow Woo, all over the place. Are you listening? That's just an illustration, but it's a powerful illustration. Try to get it. So the moment you say, I'm going to hold on to fear and anxiety, which God doesn't want you to have, is exactly you said, it's like an irony. You want blessing, but you're stopping the blessing from, from flowing. This is the part, the host. In the host, you see, I, I, I want a blessing, so you're on the pipe, but it's time you're closing that blessing from flowing out into, from you. Amen? So throw away those fear. Each time fear comes, you're going to curse those fears in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. Anxiety comes, you're going to start praying. Don't entertain and continue to have those anxiety in your heart. Fear, anxiety, worry. God's ever-present supply of blessings towards us is like the water flowing freely from the tap. A troubled and fearful heart is like hands that holding tightly at the end of the water hole to stop the water from flowing. Don't be silly, in other words. Don't be silly. Open the pipe and hold it up. Holding the hose and don't be silly. Tell your friend, don't be silly. Come on. Don't be silly. You you on the pipe, it means you want the water to flow. But worry and anxiety is going to stop it from happening. The supply of water is flowing from a tap. But God is blessing you. God is blessing you and you are stopping the blessing. So God is blessing you, God, but you are stopping the blessing. And you say, God, why are you not blessing? God, why are you not receiving? God, why are you, but you are stopping it. By the worries and fear, you choose to continue to meditate. See, meditate can be good and meditate can be bad. You meditate on your worries. You continue to think about your problem. Continue to think, I can never, I'll never change, I'll never change, I'll never change, I'll never get a good job. That means you are meditating on the wrong things. That's the same thing as holding on. The blessings are flowing, God is putting blessings, but you are holding it. That's wrong. Please turn to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Please. You have heard this verse many times, I believe. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 and 34. Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. Is it to find? Okay? And the word of God says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Say amen. amen. In other words, God can make your dreams come true more than you can. Seek God for your dreams to come true. Seek God for your needs. Seek God for your recovery. Seek God for all that you need in this life. Seek God. And God will make that come true. But the second verse is where I wanted to want to emphasize. Verse 34. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. So again and again the Bible says about do not worry. Everyone say do not worry. Tell a friend beside you, don't worry. Come on. Tell Leslie, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Each time you worry is the same as. Don't get distracted. The rest of you look here. Each time, each time you worry is like you are holding. Don't. So remember this. It's a powerful illustration. Each time you worry, you are holding the end of the whole spot and stopping the blessing to flow out. So the Bible says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own self, its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Don't worry about tomorrow. Hallelujah. Let's turn to John chapter 19 verse 13. So when Satan throws words into your ears, hey, start worrying about your husband, start worrying about your children, start worrying about your health, job. And no, no, I have shalom. I have shalom. I have shalom. Remember that. Okay, John chapter 19 verse 13 and the word of God says this, come on. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, this is the last words of Jesus. When Jesus died on the cross, his last words was this. Most of you know, right? What was the last words? It is finished. Everyone say, it is finished. What Jesus was saying is, my job on this earth is done. Jesus lived on the earth for 33 years. When Jesus died, 
I believe there was, even he was in pain, but there was a little smile on his face. I believe that. It is finished. And he surrendered his spirit. He's not saying it's finished, I'm dead now. No, no, it's finished, I did everything. All that you need is provided already. Say amen. amen. All that you need, all your problems solved. It, it, the, the soul, the, it's all solved inside of you, the spiritual realm. But it will come to it will be manifested at the right time when you are ready. Your job is to daily walk with the Lord. Daily worship the Lord. Daily thank the Lord. Daily serve the Lord. Don't daily serve your boss. Don't daily serve your flesh, your sins, your lust, your unforgiveness, your anger. Let's turn to the last verse. Thank God, it's my last verse. Because the, the battery is like, thank God because the battery is really telling me more. It's going to go off. It's my last verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. And the word of God says, I want all the ladies, not because the ladies are more worried people, but you know, I just feel like the sisters to read this. You read your version loud and loud and, and clear and proclaim it. Ready? Philippians 4, chapter 4 to 6, ready? 1, 2, 3. Come on. No let's see sounds. Okay, one more time, one more time, together. Ladies, if you are real ladies, please read. One, two, three.
Thank you, Lord. I want all of you to choose today. Are you going to continue to have a host and open, switch open the pipe and the host there? And are you going to hold on to the end there and stop the blessing from coming, flowing through, coming into your life? Or are you going to just on the pipe and let the water just flow every blessing that you need? For how, how is that going to happen? We know from God's word is to surrender our hearts to God. To not allow worry to just grip your heart. Today, as you stand before God in this church, you might not have worry. You might not have anxiety. Or some of you, you do have worry and anxiety. Okay, for those of you, you have worry and anxiety, today is the day to let it go. To let it go. Hallelujah. For those of you, you happen to be in a season where there is no worry and anxiety in your life, praise the Lord for that. But there will be a day coming ahead of you when there are going to be challenges in your life. It's going to be, when there's challenges, challenges are about to happen. When challenges come, you can choose not to fill your hearts with worry and anxiety. Let's pray. Can I have two, two people to just remove this table? Thank you.